Hi, my favorite second grade class. This is Ms. Scholes, and since we can't be together today and I miss you so much, I thought that I would share something with you. Um, so I know that we usually pass around something when we share, um, but today we'll just pretend to elbow bump. And um, one thing that I wanna share is my board. This is the board that I used to teach students from China and that's why it has the map on it. And I know you guys really like maps. So this has all seven continents. You can see that North America is right here. That's where we live. And then um, Arizona is right somewhere, right over there. And then Mexico is just a little bit south of that. So um, I hoped that you would like that. Um, I also have a book to read you. I thought we could do a couple of subtraction problems and addition problems um, with regrouping. And um, then I just have some sites to show you. Um, so I will show you those first. Um, this is my Weebly. Uh, it has a page for you now. You can click on I love my second graders and um, it has a story of the week on there for Reading Street, and it also has more to do with our five finger retelling. I know that we did that earlier in the year, but I want to make sure you remember it um, because that is the most important thing you can do to get a higher Dibbles score. Um, I also have standards over here. And uh, the two standards that we are doing this week, uh, You May Echo Me, is I can describe the story structure, including the beginning, middle, and end, and what they do to the story. So we are looking at beginning, middle, and end, which means that we will be drawing flow charts at the end of the week. And the other standard for reading is one that we've had the last few weeks, so you guys are familiar with it. We just need to be able to evaluate the characters, the setting, and the plot for stories. And 2.rl.9 is not on there, but that's where we compare the characters, setting, and plot. So when I read the book that I'm going to read you today, um, we will be thinking about the beginning, middle, and end, as well as the characters, setting, and plot. Um, I got this in the mail today. It's called um, The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. The author is the same author of The Day That the Crayons Quit, which is Miss Garvey's favorite book. Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Long ago, in an ancient and distant realm called the Kingdom of the Backyard, there lived a warrior named Rock. Rock was the strongest in all the land, but he was sad because no one could give him a worthy challenge. Rock traveled to the mysterious forest of Over by the Tire Swing, where he met a warrior who hung on a rope holding a giant's underwear. Drop that underwear and battle me, you ridiculous wooden clip man. I will pinch you and make you cry, rock warrior. Rock versus clothespin. Rock is victorious. Even though he had won, Rock was still unsatisfied. So he journeyed on to the mystical tower of grandma's favorite apricot tree. There he was met by an odd and delicious fruit. You, sir, look like a fuzzy little butt. What? I challenge you to a duel. Then let us ba battle. Now, um, I want you to think for a second and predict who you think is going to win. 
I think you probably have this one right. Rock versus apricot. I will beat you, Rock, with my tart and tangy sweetness. But Rock is victorious. Oh, I am smooshed. And yet, smooshing you has brought me no joy. Are you not entertained? They were entertained, but the battle had been too easy. So Rock left the kingdom of Backyard, still in search of a worthy foe. I gobble up the likes of you and spit them out every day, little paper. Oh, then taste my fury, giant box monster. Paper versus computer printer. No, not the paper jam. Paper is victorious. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of how we feel about the copy machine. Having beaten the fiercest fighter of Desk Mountain, Paper climbed down to the pit of office trash bin, where he battled the most terrifying horde of creatures in all the land. The half-eaten bag of trail mix. So you can probably think of our trash and um, what kind of falls on the floor by it. I have seen trail mix, but we have lots of other snacks. Paper versus half-eaten bag of trail mix. Ah, foul wizard, he's blotted out the sun. Run for your lives, laddies. At the same time, in the kitchen realm, so there is a different setting for each paper, rock, and scissors that we could talk about. In the tiny village of Junk Drawer, there lived a third great warrior. They called her Scissors. And she was the fastest blade in all the land. She too was unchallenged. On this day, her first opponent was a strange and sticky circle man. Ah, I bet you can see what that really is. Let us do battle, you tacky and vaguely round monstrosity. I will battle you and I will leave you beaten and confused with my adhesive and tangling powers. Scissors versus roll of tape. Scissors is victorious. Scissors forged on across the kitchen realm to the frigid wastes of refrigerator slash freezer. There she met her most fearsome adversary yet. Dinosaurs made of frozen breaded chicken. So if you haven't heard the word adversaries before, it is another one a way of saying um, the opposite person who is um, fighting you either with words or actions, like an enemy. No, wait, no, they don't. Scissors is victorious again. And uh, am I so good that not even dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets can be beat me? And so scissors, like rock and paper before her, traveled beyond her own kingdom, seeking a challenger who was her equal. Then one day in the great cavern of the two-car garage, rock and scissors came face to face. I hope you're wearing your battle pants, rock warrior. If by battle pants you mean no pants, but I am willing to fight you, then yes, Yes, I am wearing my battle pants. Weird, scissory one. Rock versus scissors. And I'm sure you all know how this goes. An epic and legendary battle ensued, but ultimately, Rock is victorious. You have made me so happy by beating me, said the scissors. I wish I felt your joy, scissors. For I have yet to meet a warrior who can beat me. Hi there. Those are fighting words. Wait, what? Rock versus paper. 
And we have seen how this turns out. This is the best day of my life. Thank you for winning a oh, great night of paper. That's fine for you, but it looks as though no one will ever beat me. Not so fast, paper. Wait, what? Scissors versus paper. You beat me. He has his mouth cut out now. And the three great warriors hugged each other and danced for joy, and they became fast friends. Finally, they had each met their matches. They were so happy, in fact, that then began to battle again. Round and round they went in the most massive and epic three-way battle of all time. And it is said that this joyous struggle still rages on to this very day. That is why children around the world, in backyards or playgrounds, and yes, even in classrooms, still honor the three great warriors by playing rock, paper, scissors. So if you have a brother or sister, you might want to try playing rock, paper, scissors with them today. Um, also, I would think about the characters. Obviously, the three main characters are on the front cover of this book. Um, there are a lot of different places. Um, so you could either list the places or you could put them in a category, um, such as, a, you know, mainly inside except for the clothespin part. Um, and then as far as the plot goes, I would think about the problem and the solution. If you could talk about that with one member of your family, that would be a good idea. Um, we will look at the beginning, middle, and end of this book more tomorrow. Um, the only thing I did want to do is we'll do these two problems so you guys will...